Can you smell it? Can you smell it in the air? Because I can. It smells like football. Welcome back, y'all. It's your man Handle here, and this is the Rogue Pod. And today is the beginning of the NFL football season. Today starts the 2023 season. Now, I know it's been a long off season, but it is finally here. And today and throughout the season, I am here to give you my picks on the NFL games. I do not claim to be an expert, but I know a little something. I can pick some games. I am a fantasy winner. Like I'm a pick'em's winner. I have several pick'em's championships because I know how to pick teams. I know how to pick winners. I'm going to be wrong here or there, but hey, when are we not all wrong? So let's get into it and pick some NFL games because I'm excited for tonight. First off, we start with the Detroit Lions visiting the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs on Thursday night football. This is the game to jump off the season. They was gone for a minute, now they back with the jump off. Unfortunately though, a few people who won't be back, Chris Jones is still doing his holdout. Travis Kelsey has a bone bruise after he hyperextended his knee during practice, so he may be doubtful for the game tonight. The Detroit Lions and Jared Goff come in with renewed confidence with this team having a major turnaround during the second half of last season. Jared Goff played out of his mind. He played better than a lot of us thought that he could. But the task tonight is, can he overcome the Kansas City Chiefs? Are the Detroit Lions finally going to get out of that funk and compete for a playoff spot? So to me, half a dozen in one hand, six in the other. But I guess I'm going to have to go with the Kansas City Chiefs to pull out this game. They still have Patrick Mahomes, who is the best player in the NFL. The league MVP, the Super Bowl MVP, he will be too much. I don't care who he's throwing to. We thought last season with Tyreek Hill being gone, he wasn't going to be able to get it done. It was supposed to be a rebuilding year, and they ended up winning the Super Bowl. So imagine what they're going to do now with some pieces that have been there that have gelled together. Now, to start our 1 o'clock matchups, we have the Carolina Panthers visiting the Atlanta Falcons. We have two teams that are in rebuilding mode. This whole division is a division that has brand new quarterbacks starting for each team. The Carolina Panthers have Bryce Young that they drafted number one overall. The Atlanta Falcons handed the reign over to Desmond Ritter to be their quarterback. This is going to be a tough matchup for me. They played two tough games last season. I know that Carolina has offensive line problems and Atlanta has just offensive problems. Will rookie phenom B. John Robinson be able to come in and dominate the NFL like he did the college round? I know that Atlanta is going to be strong defensively. It's just will they be able to score points? I think this is going to be a tough, hard for a game, but I'm going to have to go with my cousins, the cousin team, the Carolina Panthers to pull out the victory. In the next matchup, we have the NFC Least, where we have the league worst Arizona Cardinals taking on the Washington Commanders. The Commanders, with new offensive coordinator Eric B. Enemy and his tough coaching, I think he's whipping them into shape and trying to make them a better offense. Defensively, the Commanders have always had a tough team. It's just that they struggle with the quarterback position. They struggle with scoring points. I think B. Enemy brings a toughness. He brings a scheme that has resulted in proven wins. Now the Arizona Cardinals, they're tanking. They've traded away players. I think they've given up on a season, especially with Kyler Murray being hurt and out for most of the year. Washington takes this game. It's the East. Nobody cares. AFC North divisional matchup. The Cincinnati Bengals travel to Cleveland. It's not that far, but they go to Cleveland to play the Cleveland Browns. We don't know the status right now, currently, of Joe Burrow, who injured his calf. During training camp, he's been out ever since. They say he's clear to play. He says he wants to play, but we really don't know. Now, even if Joe Burrow decides to play, he has struggled versus the Cleveland Browns. He can seemingly beat any other team in the NFL, but for some reason, the Browns just have his number no matter who the quarterback is, even Baker Mayfield. To me, I think with the addition of Deshaun Watson and him being able to participate in the offseason fully, I think that this Browns team is going to be one of the underdogs slept on teams throughout the season. So for me, I'm going to go with the Browns and Nick Chubb. In our next matchup, we have the Houston Texans traveling to M&T Bank Stadium to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Now, the new look Ravens deploy a new offensive system, new offensive coordinator, Todd Munkin. We got OBJ in the house. We're going to see what Lamar Jackson looks like unleashed. The only problem with Baltimore now is defensively, are they going to look similar to last season? Are they going to regress? 
I think offensively, since the Ravens starters did not play in the preseason, it's going to take them time to gel. Now, this bodes well for the Texans, but I just don't think that they have enough right now. They may be good in the upcoming future. They may be good in future years, but I just think for this game, the Houston Texans are not prepared, and the Baltimore Ravens get that dub. Next up, we have the reversal of Fortune Bowl, where we have the Jacksonville Jaguars traveling to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Now, normally it's the Colts that were the good team and the Jaguars that were the bums. But with the playoff success last season of Trevor Lawrence and him making his ascension to one of the better quarterbacks in the league, them bringing in Calvin Ridley, I just think that they have too much for the Colts to endure. The Colts bringing in their own phenom, Anthony Richardson, at quarterback, but they are now without. Jonathan Taylor at running back. I don't know what games Jim Irsay is playing. I don't know if he's tanking for something. I don't know what his outlook is for this season. I just don't think that the Colts are going to be any good and the Jaguars are going to blow them out the water. Now, sometimes during week one, you get some outstanding games. And to me, this is one of them. You have the San Francisco 49ers traveling cross country to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I kind of slept on the Steelers. I'm not going to lie. But what I've seen from them during the preseason the Steelers look pretty good. I can't hold you. Like They look like a totally different team offensively. Now, with a healthy T.J. Watt, with Patrick Peterson in the backfield, will this be enough for that defense to hold down Kyle Shanahan in this offense? Newly minted defensive end Nick Bosa and his $170 million guaranteed, or whatever it is that he got, $122 million guaranteed, he's going to be extra motivated to go out there and show that he deserves that money. I think defensively, San Francisco is a really strong team. They should be one of the front runners for making a Super Bowl from the NFC side, them in Philadelphia. So I think that Pittsburgh goes down and goes down hard. In an NFC matchup, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Tampa Bay not having Tom Brady on the roster turns to Baker Mayfield to lead this franchise and lead Todd Bowles right out of a coaching job. I don't know why they settled on him. I don't know if this is a setup, but just Baker Mayfield is not that dude. After being drafted number one overall in the 2018 draft. Minnesota, I don't know what they're doing as well. They let go Dalvin Cook. They let go Zadarius Smith. They traded away some pieces, I guess, getting ready for the future. This is last year, Kirk Cousins deal. So I'm pretty sure he's going to ball out of control. Tampa Bay defensively is strong, but just offensively, they don't have enough. Mike Evans is disgruntled and wants to be traded. That doesn't bode well for them. So if you have a disgruntled employee that's not playing at his best and a quarterback who just can't get it done, I think this is going to be an easy win for the Minnesota Vikings. In our last one o'clock matchup, we have the Tennessee Titans traveling to New Orleans to take on the New Orleans Saints. New New Orleans Saints quarterback Derek Carr. I think he gives them an upgrade over Andy Dalton. Alvin Kamara is suspended for the first four games of the season. But they do have Jamal Williams from the Detroit Lions to kind of take his place. Jamal Williams led the NFL in touchdowns last season. And they do have offensive rookie of year candidate Chris Olave that many thought should have won the award. Mike Thomas is back and healthy. What are they going to get out of him? We don't know right now. But on the other side, Tennessee has Derrick Henry. And Mike Vrabel is a decent enough coach. They just don't have much coming from that quarterback position. Ryan Tannehill, he has gone downhill ever since he signed that humongous contract they drafted two quarterbacks to replace him will malik willis or will will levis actually get into the game i just think this is a team in flux and they don't know what they're doing right now so i'm going with new orleans for the win just by the slightest of margins because i don't think dennis allen is particularly a good coach at all in our first four o'clock game we have the aaron Rodgers list green bay packers with jordan love making his first start of the jordan love era in green bay it's kind of weird because you think about it over the last 30 years green bay has had two quarterbacks brett Favre, aaron Rodgers. but unfortunately the word is two of jordan love starting receiver christian watson and romeo dubs are injured right now don't know their status for the game as of yet that kind of hurts the team a little bit especially with jordan love coming in being the starting quarterback now on the other side you have justin fields for the Chicago Bears. I know that Justin Fields made strides last season in the second half of the year. A lot of people want to look at his rushing yards, but they don't see the ascension that he had with actually passing. His passing yards got better because I believe in the first half of the season, he was only passing for like 72 yards a game. Like it was really bad, but he flipped that switch and started to pass. And also the Bears decided to go out and get him some weapons. 
not only did they trade for Chase Claypool last season, they brought in DJ Moore from the Carolina Panthers to give him an illegitimate number one wide receiver. I think that and a full off season in this system is going to do wonders for Justin Field. They may even actually win this division now that Aaron Rodgers is no longer there, even though they didn't win a division last season. So I'm going to take the Chicago Bears, the Bears, to win this matchup. In our next matchup, we have the Los Angeles Rams traveling to Seattle to take on the Seattle Seahawks. Matt Stafford is finally back after being injured last season, but Cooper Cup has some issues with his hamstring and he's going to be out for the foreseeable future. That hurts the team because they do not run the ball well and they don't really have a second wide receiver that can actually carry the load. On the other hand, you have the Seattle Seahawks. They have the wide receivers to get it done and then also went into the draft and drafted Jackson Smith and Jigba, making this offense even stronger. They even drafted a backup running back to make a potent offense even more potent. They brought back Bobby Wagner. I just think that if Geno Smith can actually play to the level that he played last season, they're gonna win or compete for their division and be actually a good team. Hate to say it. But the Seahawks win this game easily. The Los Angeles Rams don't really have much on that side. I know Aaron Donald is back, but I just don't think they have enough to score points to keep up with the Seahawks. Hmm. This next matchup is the Josh McDaniel Bowl. You have the Las Vegas Raiders traveling to Denver to take on the Denver Broncos. Josh McDaniel era in Las Vegas is still here. I don't know why. This guy can't coach. They went out and got Jimmy Garoppolo, who almost got cut before the season even started. Like he was days into signing his contract and they wanted to cut him. That does not bode well for a team. Also, they played games with their star running back, Josh Jacobs. Now on the other side, the Broncos brought in Sean Payton to replace Hackett and that hack job that they did over there last year, but they still have Russell Wilson. Now, I don't believe Sean Payton is sold on Russell Wilson. I think he's going to have a short leash and that pressure might be a little bit too much for Russ, but I do think that Josh McDaniel being as bad of a coach as he is, is enough for Denver to come out and escape with a victory. Now, if you like games that are all offense and no defense particularly, this next matchup is for you. I'm personally I can't wait for this game. You have the Miami Dolphins traveling to SoFi Stadium to take on the Los Angeles Chargers. For Miami, Tua Tungvaloa is back and healthy. He has Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. I just think that those guys just are two of the most explosive wide receivers in the NFL. All Tua has to do is throw the ball up and they go get it. On the other side, you have Justin Herbert, newly minted quarterback, making all that bread, who himself has two wide receivers that aren't that bad. You have Mike Williams and you have Keenan Allen. They went out and drafted Quentin Johnston, 6'4 receiver from TCU. And they have two 6'4 plus receivers that they can just throw the ball up to. They also have Austin Eckler. Now, we have to see what happens defensively for the Chargers. Can Khalil Mack return to form? Is JC Jackson healthy? They had a lot of health concerns last season that contributed to the downfall of their team in their late season skid. I think that this game is going to be a lot of points. I just think that the Miami Dolphins are going to pull this out. Like This might be a high 40s point game, and I'm all here. I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. All offense, no defense. Now, in our last 4 o'clock matchup, we have the defending NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles traveling to the Northeast to take on the New England Patriots. The Eagles just seem to be a well-oiled machine. They went out and got better you can believe it or not they already had a strong offensive and defensive line they went out and did the damn thing and just took the university of georgia and transplanted them up to pennsylvania now they did lose miles sanders who left and went to carolina but they brought in rashad penny and deandre swift from the detroit Lions. is this an upgrade are the two better than one we have yet to see because neither of those players can stay healthy. But I just think that MVP candidate Jalen Hurts, along with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, have too much firepower for the New England Patriots. Now, on the Patriots side, Bill Belichick, I don't know what that man has lost his mind. Tom Brady left him and he's gone crazy. I don't know if he's missing him or he's just going through some, some midlife crisis. But this guy at one point only had one quarterback on his roster. Cut his backup quarterback. He cut his third string quarterback. Somebody could have claimed him and he'd have gone into the season with one quarterback. Last season, he had a defensive coordinator and a special teams coach calling offensive plays. I just think this team just doesn't have it. And Mac Jones is not that guy. So Philadelphia is going to go into New England and blow them out. Now we come to the Sunday night matchup. We have the Dallas Cowboys traveling to New Jersey to take on the New York Giants. 
Now, I know a lot has been speculated with the Dallas Cowboys, especially with the Jerry Jones drama and the mess. He's not going to pay players. Then he pays the players. He trades for a player. He doesn't tell anybody on his team that he's doing it. I just don't believe Jerry Jones really believes in Dak Prescott like that. Now, they gave him that big contract, but there isn't out, I think, after this season. Can Dak Prescott live up to the potential that they've that we've seen from him in years past? Now, he led the league in interceptions last season even though he only played 12 games, but he vowed to be under 10 interceptions. This is a divisional matchup on prime time stage. Unfortunately, the Giants have Daniel Jones at quarterback. They did resign Saquon Barkley. He finally signed his franchise tag. He is the team's best player. I do think that they upgraded their wide receiver position a little bit, which should help them. To me, this is a toss up game. It's a divisional matchup. They always play each other tough, but Thursday night games, Sunday night games, I normally give the edge to the home team. So in this game, I'm going to choose the New York Giants. Monday night football, we have the Buffalo Bills traveling to New Jersey to play the New York Jets. The Aaron Rodgers led New York Jets. Now with all the offseason acquisitions that the Jets have made, they brought in Dalvin Cook. They brought in Aaron Rodgers and all his friends from Green Bay. This team is markedly better. No doubt about it. Even last season. They came close to making the playoffs with Joe Flacco, Mike White, and Zach Wilson as their quarterback. So now you bring in a Hall of Fame talent like Aaron Rodgers, and that brings them up a few pegs. Now, will it be enough to defeat the Buffalo Bills? The Buffalo Bills, for the last few seasons, have been Super Bowl favorites or in Super Bowl contention in most people's eyes, but they have just seemed to regress year after year. There has been turmoil within the team. I guess there's been infighting with Josh Allen, the offensive coordinator, the head coach, and Stephon Diggs. Has this all been resolved? It's yet to be seen. But I do think that since the Bills have been playing together a little bit longer, and they are one of the favorites to win the AFC, I think in this divisional matchup, the Buffalo Bills come out with a narrow victory on Monday night, spoiling the Aaron Rodgers era in New York. Did Aaron Rodgers want to go to the Jets because Brett Favre went to the Jets? Never thought about that. <laughs> oh, well. That's a discussion for another time. Thank you for hanging out with your boy. This has been the week one predictions from the Rogue Pod. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, turn your notifications on so you know when I come out with another video. And I will see you guys next week. It's your boy.